everybody. It's Ken coming to you from the Circle R Ranch here in sunny, beautiful Toledo, Ohio. And I have with me today Bob Balch. <laughs> Sorry. Damn it. <laughs> ah, Bob See, now Balch. it's stuck in my head. You, you know, yeah, maybe maybe in post we can just add Greg yelling. Thank you, Greg. Bob Balch. Bob Balch. Yes. I hear it constantly. <laughs> Good. Twelve questions with Bob Balch. Are you ready, Bob? No. Why not? Because uh, you kept me up pretty late. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we have fun here. No, it was good. It was good. I'm ready. I'm ready. You ready? You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Give us a brief history of your playing career. Oh, just in like one paragraph. Huh? Yeah, we don't prepare these, so you get that look of confusion every time I ask a question. Eh? Do, do yeah. it. No, it uh, could be more than one paragraph. We no, want to I, I, know about you, Bob. I'll do it as briefly as possible because it's probably pretty boring for people, but it goes like this. My brother got sent into the army for doing bad shit. I took his guitar over. I thought I knew how to play for like a year. I was doing it like this, you know, as we discussed earlier today. Yeah. Yeah. And, and everything sounded awful, and I almost gave up. And then I went to one lesson, and the guy flipped it over, and that was it. And showed me, like, I don't know, typical, like, Metallica one or something. I was like, holy shit, I could do it. Can yeah. I cuss on this? Is that you just did. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. That's okay. Um, so you are left-handed. I am indeed, yes. This is my dominant hand, and it, it, it confuses me that it's not that way for everybody. You know what I mean? Because it's doing so much over here. So, um, but yeah, that's the truth. And so, 13, started taking lessons. 13 and a half, formed Minotaur. Okay. Yes. Minotaur. That's right. You, you've seen the photo. You can put it up yeah. on your website. It's pretty oh, good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we did four originals and one Misfits cover, and then we did that shit again live. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like a double set. Um, so, we did that, and then... Uh, Fast forward a few, I just started geeking out on jazz stuff and everything, and then um, I joined Fumet when I was 19, which trips me out because I'd only been playing for like six years, which is weird. But uh, yeah, 19, joined Fu, and now I'm 44 here, talking to talking to you. So you joining Fu has just been like, the whole time, you know, it's like, just touring, playing shows, doing records and shit. And so how many records have you done with Fu? I can't tell you that, nobody knows for sure, I don't know. I think... A lot. Yeah, I mean... Action King, California Crossing, Signs Infinite Power, Gigantoid, uh, 12, I don't know. <laughs> wow. Something. Yeah. And the band was around a little before you. They were, yeah. And uh, I was a fan. And the guy that I sat next to in music theory class, Jeff Litz, if you're watching this, thank you very much. He, he gave me No One Writes for Free on CD. And he's okay. like, these guys uh, practice at my house. So, like, his... For whatever reason, Fu Manchu wrote in search of in my friend's garage. And like I'd go over there and jam, all their shit would be set up. I'd be playing Brad's drums, and Brad would walk in and he's like, Who the fuck's that guy playing my drums? <laughs> <laughs> so Yeah, and, and um and then I started working with Brad at a place called Music House where Taylor Hawkins worked. Um and I think I took over his job because he went to go tour with like Alanis Morissette and shit. And started working with Brad and we hit it off and they needed a guitar player. So I was like, oh. I guess I'm your dude. Which was weird because I was only 19 and I'm like, am I even going to be able to get into clubs and shit? But it worked. <laughs> Nobody carded me. I toured for like two years straight, <laughs> underage. Totally worked out. Man, that was good. Nice. Yeah. And yeah. then it's been the same shit ever since. Like, I, I would like to, I mean, well, that's not true. We Big Scenic Nowhere and yes. Sun and Sail Club, other projects that I, I've done and stuff. But yeah, it's, uh, it's been foo true the whole time. Yeah. Uh, I, normally I ask what inspired you to pick up the guitar in the first place, but it was your brother. Uh, yeah, well, he, he left behind his guitar and, like, his records, and uh, I just started going through all that stuff. Yeah. And, and it was like, oh, Sabbath, that's mine. Deep Purple, that's mine. This guitar, that's now mine. And I got to thank him. I still have the guitar. I actually used it on uh, Vision Beyond Horizon, which you guys have hanging up. Nice. Um, it was an acoustic nylon string, and I... I carved a big anarchy sign right here, as you do Dude. when you're 13. Like, before even taking a lesson, I'm like, fuck yeah, this is going to work for me. Anarchy. I think I wrote, like, eat fuck on it, because James Hetfield had that on his. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so I was, I was that kid, you know, with full-on bullet and everything. <laughs> Just pegging my pants, trying to learn how to... <laughs> Death Angel board. That's right. That was a big one for me when I was a kid. I mean, yeah. still is. Me too. Still is. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're fucking rad. Oh yeah. I think yeah. Death Death Angel carved in the guitar. Uh, the Death Angel shirt I had on the Minotaur show photos. So you can see that shit. Nice. 
Yeah, and then, yeah, just food kept me busy until, you know, COVID. And now it's going to keep me busy again. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, so without thinking about it at all, yeah. you ready? Yeah. Top five favorite records, go. Pig Floyd Animals, Devo, Duty Now for the Future. Fuck, Pink Floyd Animals <laughs> would be third. I love that album a lot. Like, I, I, I listen to that shit all the time. Um, uh, My War, Black Flag. That's a, that's a pretty good one. Um, Full House, West Montgomery. Wow. Yeah. It's kind of like a desert island thing, I guess, because I want to like, well, I want to have some of this when I want to mellow out and some of this when, you know. But yeah, that's, that's a tough one, man. I'm sure everybody gets kind of stumbled on that. But Pink Floyd Animals is a quick, t- I'm really quick to answer that one. I love that one a lot. Everybody does stumble on it, which is usually why, because you could sit here and we could have this conversation for an hour. Yeah, I mean, it, would, it would be weird. And we already have. <laughs> uh, so far, what's the proudest moment of your playing career? Um, well, I mean, you guys putting my name on a guitar is pretty high up there. And I'm not just saying that because you're sitting here in the room with me. But yeah, that's that was a huge thing for me. Um, the fucking pickups, uh, the Creepy Fingers fuzz pedal, this amp. Like the fact that my name's on all that makes me feel kind of goofy. Mm-hmm, <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. I wake up and I'm like, that's, is that fucked that it's all on there? I think it's cool. I don't know. It's think, pretty cool. I guess. I, I don't know if I deserve it. I mean, I did inhale a lot of van farts for like 20 years. So to, you know, yeah. to do that, I have that status of <laughs> all those things, you know. So and we're literally running your pickups in your guitar through your fuzz pedal into your head right now. Yeah, that's right. the sound. That's so, kind of rad. Yeah, and it took me a long time to like, watch, I'll play some dude on the internet and be like, that's not that good. <laughs> I mean, just to get as fuzzy as possible, but still have that note clarity. That's kind of the goal, and and to not be feeding back and shit. So unless I wanted to. But how did you first hear about Reverend? You uh, you came uh, to a or you emailed our manager. I did actually. Yeah, yeah. I, I that was oh God. What was that like? It was probably two thousand eight. Two thousand eight. Yeah. Yeah. And I had a, I You remember the SG I was playing? It was like I do. It was like from hell. It was fucking I, awful. I remember putting my thumb between the string and the fret. Yeah, and the yeah. Well, I had fret, it like, like <laughs> I worked for this dude. guy. I was teaching guitar at this local shop in San Diego, and the, the guy, I won't say his name because I don't want to give them any, any promotion because the guy was a prick. But wow. Yeah, I didn't like him. He was like, well, he was all right, but he's like, hey, I could do, I could refret your guitar, um, and uh, I'll do it in like a day before you go on tour. And I was like, all right, fuck. He's like, I'm the go-to guy. And then we got San Francisco, played the first show. I shouldn't say he's a dick. It just, that was a, a weird move. Like, don't, please don't refret my guitar if, if you can't do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah, should have yeah. trusted him. String got cut underneath the fret. One fret fucking just fell out during the show. And I was like, dude, this is like a nightmare. Like, that's like a nightmare you would have. Like, frets oh. are falling out. Yeah. yeah. And so I was like, <laughs> just every show, I'm just like battling this instrument. Like, what the fuck? And I paid for this. This sucks. And then, uh, by the grace of God, yeah, you emailed our manager, and you were like, do you, and he's like, do you guys want to try the thing? You came out to Detroit. I played the uh, red Daredevil, Daredevil. Mm-hmm. and uh, the first chord I hit, I was like, oh, dude, thank you. <laughs> like, I could finish this tour like it, it was intended to like not be staring at frets that are just popping out and shit. And yeah, and and uh, I, I still play the guitar all the time. You still uh, have the Daredevil? I still do. I have two of them. And yeah, yeah, like a black and a red one. Yep. So, and what other what other reverence do you have besides your six? Uh, you probably have to tell me too. Pete Anderson. Yeah. I got that hollow body that you guys did. That there's not that many of. Well, there's, there's no bigs beyond. There's it. no bigs beyond it, which I love, and we use that on uh, uh, Clone of the Universe, Fu Manchu. Nice. And, uh, yeah. There's like a riff at the very end that is like. A <laughs> That through, like that guitar through a Marshall 800 is, it's it, it's rad. They like really talk to each other and shit. <laughs> it's creepy. Cool. So I got that. I got the six gun, which I used on um, our cover of Working Man from Rush. I used it for the solos on that. Um, I use this on all the rhythm stuff. Mm-hmm. I use the Daredevil on the rhythm stuff on Gigantoid, and uh, I think that's it. And then, I, then, then you guys did the SIG, so after mm-hmm. that, then, um, what else do I have from you guys? Oh, the, the, the baritone, the descent. Yeah. 
that's been fun. That makes Slayer riffs come out slowly, which yeah. I've been digging on lately. Trying to do something with that. But yeah. and then and then Hill got one. Hill got one, yeah. and we're gonna he go. And he was like, Pfft. yeah, yeah. We, we we actually started writing with it, which I hope we do more of because that, you know, that that frequency is not, or you know, that tuning isn't really featured it with Foo that much. We're in D standard, so right. That's in V, and uh, do you drop these to A? No, no. He, he, Hill's doing a weird thing where it's like the top is still B, and then the rest is like D standard. Okay. Um, which you know, you kind of gives you that like. Like that's not like a power. But um <laughs> which is that's pretty fun. Yes. Um so I got that one. I don't know, man. We've had a, a relationship for so many years. I, I'm trying to think yeah. about what else I have. Yeah. And did, now, did we once the uh, so the the pickups came and the guitar sort of came right around the same time, mm-hmm. and like cause I remember for the signature, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I remember Joe uh, Joe talking when we were because we were at a Ryan festival in Detroit when we started talking about the signature model. That's right. And because we had transitioned from the Daredevil to the Sensei, and you liked the body thickness on the Daredevil. And there were things that you liked about both guitars, and then Naylor was like, we can combine the things that he likes about both guitars into one guitar, and I was like, oh yeah, that sounds like a great yeah, idea, yeah, and that's I, how this sort of came about. Yeah. And then you guys had the pickup conversation, which was just sort of, I think uh, the Railhammer was already up and running at that time, it was like 2012, 2013, and I think the chisels might have been a little bright for you. And so that was sort of where uh, we came up with using, or Joe came, I say we, I didn't come up with any of that. Naylor, yeah, I didn't Naylor came even up with the idea. My name's on it, I don't even know. Yeah, <laughs> but Naylor up? came up with the idea of putting brass covers on the pickups if you that say would so, sort yeah. of like tame this like mid-range thing and make it sound more like you. And he knew it, like that's the thing about, that's so freaky about Naylor. So yeah, like, Naylor's Like he, he picked up on that right away. Yeah. And then we did like one prototype. Yeah. And it was dialed in. And, and, and yeah. I still have it. And yeah, I love that one. <laughs> awesome. I love that. I used to tour with it. I don't know why I toured the prototype. But uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah. Because they're made to be played. Mid range spike a little bit. So like you throw obscene amounts of fuzz at it and it's still got that note clarity. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that Naylor killed it. Oh, that's our guy. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about amps and pedals. Yep. I mean, I mentioned your stuff, but you have a variety of things, of course, that you. Yeah, especially the last two years. Yeah, I'm just sitting around at home, like on reverb, like son of a bitch here. Right, Got to get that. Got to get that. I'd like to thank. Uh, I didn't no buy interest anything. financing. I didn't buy anything during COVID. <laughs> yeah, you don't really need much, dude. Yeah. I've been to your house. It's. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's gnarly. You don't want to upset like the other 200 guitars when you get a new one. So. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, of course, Brad from Foo has the creepy fingers. Yeah, he does the fuzz pedal that I'm playing. Um, yeah. And, and that, that's a really cool thing to be in a band with someone like that, because he'll bring like the breadboard, which is basically like a pedal that's not completely built yet. And we'll just sit around, dicking around, like, oh, what is, how does that sound? How does this sound? You know? And, you know, if something goes wrong, like, uh, our drummer might step on the pedal and break it. It's been known to happen. But, uh, yeah, Davis is like, oh, I'll fix it. Yeah, uh, of course. Yeah, it's a really good... It's good, good to be in a band with a dude like that, and he'll bring like people send him like vintage fuzz pedals that are super expensive, and they're just like, tell me what this is doing, and so we try them all out and stuff. And yeah, Rad. It's, it's really cool. Yeah, that's got to be fun with that breadboard thing to to be. If in, that's what it's called, I think it's a bread. Yeah, in the band situation, like yeah, with well, the drums and all the guitars mm-hmm, and everything, yeah. and then be able to see how you fit in the mix yeah. with all those other things going on yeah, as you, opposed you, to just... Usually, like, he'll, he'll bring it and we'll dick around with it. But there, there's been a couple times where I've just left it on the ground and rehearsed with it. Like, yeah. Like, going, oh, shit. And, you know, if you, like, barely touch it, it's like, yeah. <laughs> shit goes yeah. crazy. But um, What else are you playing around with besides uh, besides your, your fuzz pedal? Um, as far as pedal, like... Pedal-wise, Just yeah. dirt pedals? Yeah, or? yeah. I mean, uh... I see you're into this J-Rocket dude thing. Yeah, I like the dude. The dude's... That's really fun. So that's like, uh... Well, I'll let you hear it. This is my tone, which we'll talk about this amp, too. Rolla. Yeah. Uh, my clean tone. So like, if I want to get clean, I just run the neck pickup and... 
sure. Gotta sure. grab the volume, but that's my the creepy fingers. That's not from that's from me dropping down to B. <laughs> and then so here's the dude. That one's, pretty, that one's pretty fun. I mean, Tube Screamer, everybody, you're like born with a Tube Screamer, I guess. But yeah, I've been going kind of weird with like delays lately. I got a bunch of like weird old phasers during COVID. Every month I, I got something. So I got well, and something. you were kind of getting into the delay stuff on Clone of the Universe too. And, and yeah. Gigantoid, mm -hmm. even, like, there's some pretty cool. Yeah, and then playing in Big Scenic Nowhere with, with Gary from Yanni Man, like, it, it, he's like a pedal addict, so it's like, you know, I, I try to keep, not keep up, but like compliment what he's doing, so nice. um, I got a bunch of like weird shit to do that, like synthy sounding pedals and stuff, but. Nice. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm kind of all over the map. I like this Keeley Supermod workstation. This thing's pretty rad, because everything that's on here. <laughs> That's my delay settings. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but like the phasers and shit that are on here and the tremolos are cool. <laughs> uh, it does a ton of shit. It's pretty fun. Nice. Yep. So now we're going to go like completely sideways. You ready? Yep. All right. Do you have any unusual skills or hobbies outside of the guitar stuff that you want to share with us? <laughs> um, I don't know, not really. I mean, other than Spin Doctors fan club. Yeah, no, I'm, I got a Spin Doctors like full size tattoo on my back. That's like pretty rare. Nice. No, I don't really. Um, yeah, fuck. I mean, I could, I could kind of surf. That's good. That's yeah, a, that's a good no, skill. I mean, I've been you, you surf for, a lot. I surf a lot. Yeah, I could, I could do that. Um, the fuck? Oh, I cut my dog's hair during COVID. Really? Yeah, I bought the whole fucking thing and shaved her down, and it looked good. Is it Shih Tzu, you said? Shih Tzu, yeah. I kept the, the mustache and the beard long, so she's all confused and shit. <laughs> but, um, yeah. That's a good answer. I like that. Yeah, I, could, yeah, I, could, yeah. I guess I can cut dog's hair, you know? Once I got to the back end, I was like, eh, do I really want to go this far? But yeah, uh, I pulled it off. Do you yeah. have any advice for up-and-coming players? Um, just play Reverend, because they, st they stay oh. in tune. How is it nobody's ever said that? I know. Wow. Well, I was briefed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just play Reverend. You're like, you want to go back to the airport, dude? <laughs> um, yeah, that's it, really. Play yeah. Reverend. And, and just fuck around with pedals and everything. Too. I mean, it took me years and years and years to finally go like, oh, okay, that's the sound, you know? Yeah. Like, the fuzz pedal that, that Brad makes for me is, is kind of like a sound of two fuzz pedals combined where one has an external bias control, and you crank it so it acts like a gate. So if you heard that pedal with the bias control cranked, it's like, like barely coming through. And then you just blast it with fuzz on the front end. So it's, it's, it's cool. And so that's what he did with mine. But it took years and years and years for me. I heard this shit in my head. And then, yeah, did it on accident. I was just, you know, you lay out a bunch of pedals and you're trying to listen to all of them. And I was like, wow, this is rad. That pedal doesn't usually sound like that. And I realized that one of them was on. So nice. I dropped my pick. So do you think that, uh, that finding... So obviously, for you, finding a sound that inspires you, inspires you to practice and yeah. take it further. I mean, yeah, I mean, everybody, every guitar player, would tell you that a piece of gear sometimes comes with like a, a song in it. You know what I mean? Like you get something, and you're like, I would have thought to do that with this. That's cool, you know. Yeah. So. No, I've I've bought amps that I've like. Oh, I have to start a band now. Yeah. For this, mm -hmm. I don't have a band for this. I mean, the the baritone guitar. I was like, I should start something with slowed down slayer shit and just call it slower and play it on the baritone. And cool. without the baritone, like I was kind of thinking about it, and I'm like, yeah, whatever. And then and then you sent me that, and I was like, oh, it's on now. I, I can't not nice. do it. So. So, what do you got coming up? Oh, um, Fu Manchu is going to be in the studio uh, in 24 hours for our third um, EP. So we were doing three EPs to celebrate the 30th anniversary. Okay. We're going to finish that one up. we got a really cool guest vocalist on one of the tunes. I can't say who it is, but you've all heard of him. And uh, 
We fucking nailed it. Rad. It's a cover. Um, Nicholas Cage might be involved, but I can't say how. But once it comes out, you'll be like, oh yeah, I get that. Um, okay. okay. Yeah, so that's kind of a cool surprise. So I got that coming up. Um, still working with uh, Reeves, um, collaborating with Big Scenic Nowhere stuff. God, so awesome. we've been emailing back and forth about, about doing a few things. Uh, so I'm sitting on hours and hours of music from that. Uh, working on this slower thing, which is the slow down Slayer stuff with uh, members of Monolord, Kylesa, and Caius, and uh, just teaching guitar on Skype all day. You Play know? this riff. Playthisriff.com. Uh, I do that as well, where I interview people. And uh, what's that? I, I milk cows. Wait, what? No, aren't you touring? <laughs> That's me touring. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's the bus. <laughs> 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 yeah, so uh, Fumichu will be in tour, uh, be on tour uh, June. Something in Europe, festivals and, and, and club dates and stuff. So I think I think we leave like June fifth. When's the U.S. going to come around again? Uh, I would like to say. I mean, I know we got we're trying to do a West Coast run in August, um, and then we have more more dates in August and uh, for the states, but a full states run because we got two Europe things this summer, and then we'll do like mini states run. So a full one probably won't be until like next year, unfortunately. But you know, which is kind of how it is. Sweet. But it'll be good. Yeah, come out and check us out. Bob Balsh. Thank you. <laughs>